Hello Vinyl Community, uh, Sean, the uh, uh, Vinyl Dreamscape, back to do another video. Um, doing it for my phone again. Apparently there's some volume drop with my, uh, my laptop that I'm just trying to figure out what's wrong there. So I'll do another one from this and then I'll, I'll get that taken care of. Maybe I have to buy an external microphone or something like that. So today I thought we'd go in a little bit different direction and uh, talk a little bit about soul music and, uh, and, and that aspect of the record collection and then find some things that maybe you don't hear about um, as much or see as much as uh, you know um, Marvin Gaye and, and stuff like that. Not that that's not good, Marvin Gaye's great. Um, but I thought we'd look at something maybe a little bit more um, political, something a little bit more um, um, in your face than just um, uh, somebody with a velvety voice. So um, I thought we'd talk a little bit about this gentleman, Gil Scott. Um, this album came out in 1971. Um, this is before him uh, and Brian Johnson started to collaborate together. And this uh, album is on that, that nice label. And uh, Pieces of a Man, pretty tough record to find. Uh, pretty amazing record. And, and the song I think everybody knows from here is really uh, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. And at this point, Scott really uh, uh, considered himself more of a poet than a, a vocalist or a, a singer and, um, and wanted to make an impact with his lyrics, which were often, um, I remember this is during the, during the late 1960s, this album came out in 1971, and, uh, and uh, uh, black empowerment was really a, a big issue and, uh, and the way that the government was uh, subverting uh, black leaders in America. Um, all we have to do is look at what happened to uh, two of the most prominent uh, African American leaders uh, the country's ever seen, which were uh, uh, Malcolm X and, and Martin Luther King, both of whom were, were assassinated. And um, this record is very much in response to uh, the kind of uh, brutality that was going on in the, in the uh, African American community. And the revolution will not be televised is a big part of that. The song became uh, very famous um, and was used often by uh, um, a lot of rap artists like Public Enemy who used uh, the themes involved in some of uh, Scott's uh, um, songs. And uh, in addition to that, this is just a beautiful record. And uh, the soulfulness of, of Scott's voice um, really um, has an impact and you you start to see the world I think if, you, if you're not exposed to to uh, some of the crimes that are going on you know in the Empire then I think that um, that that these records really expose that and show you show you part of the, the country that maybe people haven't seen before or if you're from outside the country that you haven't had a chance to to realize what what's Go, was going on in 71 and is, and is still going on in 2023. So after this, and there are, I don't have all of, um, all of these albums, but um, probably what I consider his best was, uh, was this record. And um, this is a, this is a really beautiful record and I want to, this is on the, that label that everybody tries to collect. Um, so you can see that up close. So that's the Strata East label. And uh, that's an original. And uh, this is uh, Winter in America. Uh, I mean, I think the title kind of says it all. Um, and the song is, is, is just beautiful. These turn much more into songs now on this record because uh, um, Brian Johnson, uh, Jackson um, and him partnered up and Jackson would do the music and Scott would do the, the, uh, the lyric and uh, together uh, they went on to make I think seven albums don't quote me on that I could be wrong um, and this might just be uh, the pinnacle of that collaboration um, the two of them really uh, together um, forged a, a revolutionary um, alliance and together they were really uh, 
doing the job of educating. Um, the famous, another famous song on here is The Bottle, which was uh, critical of alcohol and drug abuse, um, something that uh, Bill Scott dealt with his whole entire life. And what this album really seeks to do is cut through the veneer of uh, the red, white, and blue that, um, that we so often are, are propagandized with and try to show something um, deeper, um, try to show something of what's really going on. After the, the TV commercials with the hot dogs and the beer, um, what's really happening to uh, uh, parts of the population, and whether that's the poor or whether that's minorities. And so when he talks about winter in America, he talks about the, the, cr the crime at the, at the heart of the nation, um, not living up to what could have been. And, um, and the expectations that people had, you know, when you, when you read the U.S. Constitution and read about the, uh, you know, all men are created equal, and, and these words, um, not living up to, in reality, um, what they should have. And of course, everything falls short. People will say, well, you know, uh, the, the world isn't, uh, uh, isn't perfect, and, uh, and that's understandable, but you have to be on the right course. And there's a significant portion of the population that even today um, doesn't feel like that's happening. And these songs are a reflection of that. So when Gil Scott talks about winter in America, he's talking about the, the shame that um, a significant portion of the population was was forgotten about, overlooked, and that it's winter, and uh, hopefully that the one day there will be a thaw, and that um, and that the country and its citizens could live up to, not overnight, but at least move on the right course to righting some of the wrongs that um, that have been done. So, um, move on to the next record, and this is a record that I, I think really had an impact on me. I can remember being a, a young boy. My parents used to watch uh, Saturday Night Live. And on Saturday Night Live, uh, they had Richard Pryor on uh, in an episode where they, they uh, had advertised that they were gonna have uh, Richard Pryor on the show. And uh, um, Richard Pryor uh, made an, an insisted that, that if uh, he was gonna appear, that uh, Gil Scott be his musical guest. And, uh, and the station, uh, Saturday Night Live, Lauren Michaels said, no, no, we're not going to do that. We want someone on the show who's more commercial and more commercially viable. And at that time, you got to remember, Pryor held a lot of sway um, because he was probably the, the top comedian in the country and he was extremely popular. And, uh, and Pryor wouldn't back down. He absolutely would not back down and this was days before the, the show was about to be aired and a decision was made to, um, to um, uh, not have Gil Scott perform. And I forgot who the other artists that they were looking at. They would probably be embarrassed today. Uh, in the end, Saturday Night Live ended up backing down because uh, Pryor said, I will not appear on the show, I'll walk. I will walk. And they said, you know, you're gonna lose this money, we'll sue you. He said. Go ahead, do it. Um, you're either going to have Scott on the on the episode with me, or or uh, you're not going to have either one of us. And the uh, the station backed down, and they ended up capitulating to it. And it's a great story. And I, I can remember the episode being on. And at the time, I didn't know I was very young, and yet I still remember sitting in front of the TV. And there's a there's a song on this album called Johannesburg. And uh, I remember them performing. It's the very first track on side one. And Johannesburg is about uh, South Africa. Have you heard the word Johannesburg? It's call and effect kind of a song. And uh, I can remember even at the time being intrigued by it, like hearing the, the band playing together. They had a terrific band and uh, and the groove of the song along with the call and response. I remember it. And I didn't understand then 
what they were singing about. And as soon as I got old enough, I mean, I, I got into music pretty young. I was, you know, 11, 12 years old looking through record bins. And uh, of course, I wasn't looking for Gil Scott records. I was looking for other, other music. But um, eventually, I, I did found, find that. And eventually, I did find out what Johannesburg meant and how important that was that even in 71, you know, it'd be another 10 years before the, what was happening in South Africa would really come on everybody else's radar. And yet they were singing about it then. And, uh, and, the, and the, the travesties of what was happening there, um, you know, unfortunately were on very, very few people's radar. And if it hadn't been for the attention and the stand that people like Pryor and Gil Scott had taken, um, you know, you wonder how long that situation would have just continued. That it was really the, finally their embarrassment that forced a change to happen. Um, great record. And you can find these, you know, this is not on Strata, um, this is on uh, Arista. You can find these uh, fairly, you know, like 30 bucks or whatever, usually. For, for a good one that's in nice condition and um, and these are these are a little hard to find in good condition they were they were played people who owned them played them and uh, enjoyed them which is what you should do with a, a record not uh, not treat it like it's a, uh, you know a, a treasure or something like that you should play it so it was great getting this album and and uh, and hearing that song in a whole different context for me when I was a little bit older and I started to get into um, soul music, which was pretty, I was pretty young. It was all around us, you know. Um, and so funkadelic and, uh, and, and music like that came into my life at, you know, probably as a, you know, right as I was turning into a teenager at 13, 14 years old and starting to investigate that and, uh, and really being drawn to, you know, uh, you know, what's going on, uh, Marvin Gaye and, and, and some of the aspects of soul music that were were very political and uh and gil scott was right at the forefront of it and what was and what was so great about it is um is how soulful the 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 music was there's a if you're interested there's a great interview with brian uh, johnson on a, um, a show called uh the gray zone and uh, you can find it on youtube and it's a great um, segment about an hour maybe it's two hours it was a terrific interview and they go into depth into what happened um, between the relationship between the two of them because as soon as they stopped their collaboration um, things you know changed and uh, it was a, they continued to make great albums throughout the 1970s and uh, this is certainly one of them great record and uh, I always liked that the you know, record companies back in the 70s would ante up for these beautiful, um, these beautiful sets that today they just, they, you know, they make these cheap, cheap things back then. It was, and, and you got to remember that um, this was not one of their top selling acts, but they still made the investment in it and, and uh, made a classic, you know, and uh, they were less worried about uh, sales then, I, I suppose. And one of the final, the last uh, three albums or so that they collaborated on were, in my eyes, they tried to start mixing uh, disco sounds a little bit into the mix, and that was the thing. And um, while it's cool that they experimented and tried different things, I'm not sure I completely uh, felt like it worked. But this was song had a, a, a significant political impact. There's a track on here called... Um, we almost lost Detroit. Right there. And um, it's basically talking about nuclear war and, and uh, not just nuclear war, but the use of nuclear energy, which was back then a big part of, you know, uh, the liberation movements that were happening were very much against um, nuclear energy as an alternative to uh, fossil fuel because they worried about the impact that it could have on communities and they particularly worried that that these uh, um, the nuclear fallout would be would hit impact poor and, and uh, minority communities which is what usually happens you know when there's a pipeline to be made or when there's 
destruction to happen or, or, or um, land to be taken over, it seems like it's always in an area that's um, uh, poor and for people who don't have a voice, uh, minority communities, and that just seems to happen again and again and again. So I, I'd highly recommend this record. I think it's probably the last real classic that they did. I think they went on to make two more records after this, and you could start to hear the, uh, the disco influences. There's still great tracks on those records, and if you can come across them, you don't see these that often. You just grab it. If it says, you know, Bill Scott on it, um, grab it. And there's also, there's a hits compilation that I've been waiting to get my hands on called, I think it's called The Revolution Will Not Be Televised, and uh, gives you a little overview. Um, before Pieces of a Man, there was one other record that, that Scott made, and that's a pretty tough record to find, too. So I always keep my eyes out for these. They're, they're, uh, they're scarce. You used to see them around more often uh, than you do now. But anyway, if you, if you haven't investigated this, and um, if you like soul music, if you like uh, Marvin Gaye and, uh, and music like that, then, then you're probably going to love uh, Gil Scott. He's not really an underground artist anymore. More and more people know about him, but he's certainly worth the investment and the time to uh, learn a little bit more, especially if you're someone who's inclined to, to study the lyrics and really see what they were talking about and what they were trying to criticize in, I think, a, a constructive way. And they were trying to lead the nation to something um, that unfortunately to this day was pushed back on and, and and we still hear the pushback on it uh, to this day. And uh, maybe some things never change, but hopefully one day uh, the revolution that, that they talked about you know, will happen and we can all be a part of that. So thank you, Vinyl Community. Um, hope you enjoyed this and appreciate your, uh, your, your watching and listening. Thank you.